Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it, especially on a day like today, but I see that means people are interested in something, so they're coming out. We are against expansion. We recently passed a resolution expressing our opposition to the state using eminent domain to expand those power lines through the town of Clovrick and other localities. We believe that there are other options for expansion of power, other options for the expansion of the power lines, such as burying the lines, as said, the above ground lines are alternate power sources. We, also, we are also supportive of the efforts of the farmers and families for Clovrick, and I want to thank them for organizing this meeting and for their ongoing efforts to get this information out to the public on this issue. It's exactly these types of groups that we need in order to make the town's voices heard. And as a town board, we are 100% behind all those efforts. Again, let me say that, 100%. You are doing exactly the right thing by joining forces and working together with all the other groups formed in the issue in both Columbia County and Dutchess County. We need to continue to work together to make sure that the state knows that this is not just one town or a group of landowners that are concerned, but this project is about the entire Hudson Valley. We are looking forward to working with all my colleagues in other towns in the county and to make sure that our voices are heard. I encourage all of you to write letters to the Public Service Commission today and get your neighbors and friends and families to do the same. Again, thank you for coming. I look forward to talking to you at the end of the program. I'm also encouraging all of you to contact me or any of our other town board members about this project or anything else you would like us to know about or have questions on, if we would. Personally, we are fighting a Goliath, but I see a hell of a lot of Davids in this audience. Thank you. So he writes, the proposed Marcy to Pleasant Valley power transmission line is an issue that I've been monitoring with great concern. The proposed line would run through significant areas of the 19th Congressional District. Many constituents have raised questions and concerns about the local impact of this project. Though I support upgrading our transmission capabilities for the benefits of all New Yorkers, I believe the PSC and the New York State Power Authority should examine all alternative and scenarios which, with such buried cables to minimize the impact on constituents. It should also be represented through a full and transparent public comment process that addresses local concerns for these projected projects. The public comment in my district, as witnessed in many public hearings held throughout the town's impacts by these lines, are strong and clear that there is great concern on many levels. The impact to properties affected by these power lines can be significant, not only to property owners, but to the local economy. I request a comprehensive and fair review processed by the, to be completed as soon as possible. Thank you, Congressman Chris Gibson. Good morning. It's an honor for me to be here with all of you this morning. Uh, thank you to the organizers of this event and to all of you for taking your time this morning to come out in such force. I'm thrilled to be here with my colleague, Dee Dee Barrett, and Congressman Gibson's office. You know, I serve four different counties but Columbia County is the only county in my district that I serve in its entirety, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, when I first uh, was invited, I initially was asked to attend and listen to your comments, which I was thrilled uh, to be able to do. And then I was asked if I would speak and listen, and I'm certainly glad to do that as well. Uh, in addition to speaking and sharing my thoughts, I'm really here to learn more. I want to hear from you about the proposed power line projects and how it could impact you, your families, your farms, your land, your property values, and our Columbia County community. As your representative at the State Senate, your voice your opinions, your concerns are my top priority. I also want you to know that I too have real concerns, the physical, economical, and practical concerns, real questions about the proposed power line projects that impact on Columbia County and surrounding counties. We can't let Claverick or any community in Columbia County be treated like a speed bump on New York's energy highway. That's unacceptable. 
I'm just one senator. Thank you. I'm just one senator with one voice and one vote, but I will do everything in my power to prevent that from happening. Like you, I have real questions about the physical impact of high voltage lines, steel towers, and other energy transmission infrastructure, and how all that development could impact on this historic community and local scenic beauty. Like you, I have real concerns and questions about the economical impact of such a project on your community and on your property values and the potential for misuse of eminent domain and the dangerous precedent that that sets. Like you, I have real questions about the practical impact of such a massive project and miles and miles of high power transmission lines cutting across, cutting through multiple communities. I can't speak for the governor or folks downstate, but I know that Columbia County is more than just some lines on a map of New York State. It's a caring, concerned community of neighbors, families, and people with long, proud tradition of family farming, local commerce, and small town charm. It's your home. It's worth preserving, worth protecting, and worth fighting for. I have met with two of the four potential companies that have issued initial proposals for the power line projects. My direct questions to them focused on the project's impact since early maps indicated that it cut across Columbia County. I asked what, if any, is the reciprocal benefit for Columbia County? In other words, what's in it for Columbia County? I asked for a detailed, specific listing of the impacts, physical, economical, and practical, from the proposed power line project. I also asked about using the latest technology, such as underground transmission lines, power lines that are buried, and unlike hanging lines and massive steel towers, have a much smaller footprint in impact on people and property. I know that I'm not alone in having these concerns. These concerns must be addressed. These concerns will be addressed. And the extra time that we've recently been afforded means more time for more answers. I will push the Public Service Commission and any company seeking to be part of the proposed power line project for answers in each of these areas. I want you all to know that I understand your concerns and the strong local opposition to the power line project. I know that the town of Claverick and many of the towns and county in Columbia County passed resolutions against this project and that many residents in the town and county and nearby community showed up and spoke up and out from their hearts in opposition to this project. I want you to know that I am on your side and that I am elected to serve you. I am proud and truly honored to do so. I will continue fighting for you and representing your views. I will do my best not to allow Columbia County to be treated like some speed bump on the state's energy highway. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning, and thank you all for being here. You know, over the past few months, uh, I have been to a number, my staff and I, a number of meetings and gatherings like this in the town of Clinton, in the town of Milan, in Livingston. We've met with the Public Service Commission. We've met, we've talked on, on several occasions with the governor's office, with his deputy uh, energy secretary. We've continued to reach out to learn, to educate ourselves, and to be able to be there for our constituents. But the bottom line is we are a region that has flourished in the last few years despite the economic downturn because of our beautiful, beautiful landscapes, our view sheds, our farms, 
this has been one of the great success stories in the last years in New York State, that the, re this region and these power lines would do nothing but destroy them. And so it's been incredibly important that we continue to educate the PSC and the governor. And I think that we can feel that they are listening. I want you to know that despite the fact that the lines are, are down in the uh, comment area for the Public Service Commission, I'm sitting right next to Pam Carter, who, Pam, you want to raise your hand, who's here from the PSC. And we'll happily, as she and Jim Den, her colleague, have been doing, answer questions and be responsive to you. We need to continue to let them know that this is not this is not an acceptable option. As I sat in these meetings, I've listened to farmers and families who lost part of their land three generations back to the first power lines. And then the next generation lost land when, they, um, when the pipelines were put through. And now a third generation is dealing with facing loss of farmland and, and uh, having their property taken away by the government or destroyed or made unusable. And as Will Yandick has so eloquently said, nobody in this state wants to think that when they turn their air conditioning on, it's because somebody had to give up 15 acres of farmland. We are a state that cares about our farms. We care about our natural resources. We care about our region and our diversity. And I'm so happy to have Senator Marchione along with Senator uh, Gibson as my allies in this because my district seems to encompass most of this power line. I, I have Dutchess and Columbia County and um, too many of my towns are going to be adversely affected. So we need to understand that we need to keep the power on but the power, the, the, the pressure on to get the power not to be in this way and it's truly, it's truly an opportunity for the community and for the public to make their feelings felt and make their own power felt in a way that will have a, have a satisfactory impact on a decision that can be made. I think, you know, as, as the supervisor said, we feel like a lot of, uh, of Davids against a, a Goliath, but together I think this is what government is truly all about. It's government of the people and by the people, and you are the people, and we need to help them understand that these are not acceptable choices, that we do not want power lines, monster power lines, 150 foot power lines, destroying our view sheds and our farms and our communities and moving people out of their homes without their, their own choice. So it's, it's, it's an opportunity to make sure that government is responsive to us and I thank you all for being part of that and please continue to do that. Our office is ready, as I said, for months we've been working on this issue as to be responses to help to get answers to questions in any way we possibly can. So keep it on. Power to the people. Thank you. So I want to do two things. First, I want to demystify for you a truly ridiculously complex mess. Now, our energy attorney, who's a superior human being, says that um, mess is a technical scientific term. So that's how we refer to this frequently, uh, not always in public, you understand. Secondly, I want to touch your head and your heart in such a way that all of you choose to become involved in saving our way of life in the Hudson Valley. Now that may sound a bit dramatic, but it actually isn't because the economic impact has already started and I'll explain why. Um, there's the serious, uh, dreadful situation of losing homes and land. There's also, of course, increased taxes. There's a whole lot of other really bad things. But as a result of this unknown uh, mess out there called the power lines, what has happened is that people who were going to buy apartment buildings in Columbia County, and I had someone come to me this week to say, not doing it, can't do it, don't know what's happening. We had someone come to us saying, we were going to invest in a very large dining hall project for our educational institution. Off the charts, Sandy Williams, we adore Williams Lumber, you, have, you understand, down there in Dutchess County. Um, sorry, Sandy, no project. Now, I have many, many stories like this. You'll be very pleased to know I'm not going to tell you all of them. But the point is, this is not something that is out there. This is here and it's right now, and make no mistake. So if you think that simply because you are lucky enough, so to speak, not to have your property abut the power line, you need to rethink this. 
and you need to hear what Kathy said and what Dee Dee said. If you love this country and you love what we've done, then please help us protect it. Now, I have spent most of the last six months trying to get to the facts. And I will tell you up front that because of the, the way that the PSC is managing this and because of the process, there certainly are facts, but they change rapidly. And it isn't actually, uh, you really have to listen up and you have to pay attention and you have to tie in because things change very fast, literally from day to day. We were told in Milan, for example, by a PSC attorney in October that there would be two applicants that would be coming down with their solutions down through uh, Columbia and Dutchess County. And I said, gee, you know, I'm not, are you really sure? Well, said the PSC attorney, uh, yeah, because really we require, the PSC requires that, that all applicants come and, and tell all affected towns, potentially, well in advance of filing their solution that, that the, you know, so you've got two today, so it's probably pretty safe to assume that there won't be anybody else. The next morning at 8.30, October 23rd, two hours before the first meeting with the judge managing this process, David Prestman, we got a call at Milan Town Hall from the third applicant who said, well, of course we sent this to you. And we said, uh, well, no. And they said, well, of course, you must have lost it. And our supervisor said, uh, I think that this is not the right tone to set at this point. <laughs> That's how fast things change. Um, so when you, if you become frustrated because your elected officials or your, your grassroots groups or the leaders cannot answer every single question and it doesn't stay still, just understand this is, a, this is moving. It, it is, it can absolutely, we can absolutely have impact. We already have, we'll talk about it. But you gotta check your facts and you gotta check them four ways from Sunday, as my sainted grandmother said. All right, so the bottom line is, in 2013, Governor Cuomo and the governor is sponsoring this project, make no mistake. Governor Cuomo and the New York Public Service Commission, the PSC, proposed an energy project that if it goes through as proposed, you understand we're in process here, it will take our homes and land, it will destroy property values, and it has already started. Just ask your assessors. It will increase taxes because the PSC, the governor, and all the applicants are on record as saying that the, the costs will be paced on, play, passed on to the ratepayer. That's, guys, all of us here. It will also very seriously increase security and terrorism risks. I will tell you about that. It will injure businesses. At this point, I have counted up to 10 businesses that will be completely wiped out, only in Dutchess County. And there is this small matter of the increased health risks. This is not a pretty picture. It's definitely scary. Now, you might think that if the government in Albany is willing to cause such damage and make so many voters hopping mad, they must have done their homework. I mean, surely, right? You would be wrong. In fact, there is no clear proof that we need what is being proposed, none at all. In short, we have an expensive, destructive solution in search of a problem. <laughs> now, this is backwards, it's crazy, it's absurd, but it's real and moving fast, and as everybody has said, we must not put up with this. Okay, so if you take the tape back two years ago, to Governor Cuomo's State of the State speech. That is the beginning of all of this commotion. I believe the term is mess. He began to talk about fixing New York's energy problems, specifically the need to get more electricity from upstate to downstate, read Manhattan and Long Island, and to fix the problems with the overall grid that carries our power. Now, we all agree that we want to fix aging infrastructure, 
We just want to do it right. The PSC, if we fast forward now to April of 2013, about a year and a half, the PSC requested what they call applications. First of all, I'd like to thank the uh, Churchtown Fire Company for getting this space ready for us. It's actually not easy to get more than a few hundred people together in this county. So it's a great space, and we thank you for that. You've done a great job. Uh, my name is Will, and I do come to you as a farmer and a fourth-generation Hudson Valley resident. And many of you were at the last uh, meeting that we held in Livingston. I'd like to congratulate uh, Clawrick for forming a group as well. Two months have passed since our last organizational meeting, and many of you are likely thinking, okay, what's new? What's changed? Where are we now? Since we've learned about these transmission projects, we've had to organize very quickly. And as you've heard, a new coalition is forming up and down the Hudson River, a coalition of landowners, concerned residents, lawmakers, and others who have joined together. This opposition is growing both in numbers and in diversity. We're united, as you've seen tonight, across political backgrounds, in communities up and down the river, upstate, as well as downstate. We've had some successes. Our voices have ri has risen up to the governor's office, who again, as you've been told, took time in his State of the State address to say very clearly to the Public Service Commission and to the utilities that the preferred solution is no more land and towers that are no higher or wider. So in light of this, some of you might ask the question, why do we still have to have meetings like this? Why do we still have to write letters to our lawmakers and get the ears of our lawmakers, and write letters to the Public Service Commission, and take a valuable day out of our Saturday afternoon when it's snowing outside to come to a place like this? A few things stand out that make our involvement now more important, more important than ever. And although we have the governor's remarks, we have the media's attention, we have the ears of our lawmakers, we still do not have a guarantee that these projects will not seize our land. What we have are comments from Audrey Zibelman, the commissioner of the PSC, that says she would like to see a project that doesn't require eminent domain. And then we, when our groups call up utilities such as National Grid, we hear phrases such as, yeah, we're 80% sure that we're going to have a project that's not going to require your land. And we are, we are here to, today to simply say that these statements are not good enough. We're here to draw a red line in front of eminent domain and call upon the Public Service Commission now, before any project is chosen, to state publicly that they will not choose a bid that requires even one more acre of new land. It is the Public Service Commission, public, and it's time that it lives up to that word and heed the wishes of the people that are here and throughout the valley and the governor who appointed them. Eminent domain is simply not necessary to deliver this power, and it's time we once and for all remove it from the table and expose it for the self-interested land grab that it is. And once we've settled that issue, once we can agree with that and bring the temperature down, we can sit down a little more calmly and talk about the real solutions to this energy problem. Okay. Now, the Public Service Commission has said that even if congestion pricing goes down, in other words, even if we can prove that this project is not needed, and that is a very real question still on the table, and even if the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission does not tax or force us to build new lines. Okay. The Public Service Commission then says to us, well, we've still got some old technology and old lines and old towers that are going to need to be replaced. I mean, some of the lines that run on my farm are literally from the 30s and 40s, and they're getting old. So we say to this very simple, simply, if we, the ratepayers, are the ones that have to finance the infrastructure that the utility companies make money off of, then I'm sorry, I think we should have a say in the technology being used. Wow. 
And so if it's not eminent domain, let's talk about the kinds of technology that we can all be proud of. Let's talk about high composite lines ma manufactured by the company 3M that can carry a greater capacity on the same lines with the same towers. Let's look seriously, seriously, not just paying lip service to, but looking seriously at the cost of burying lines underground. Now look, we all know it. Burying lines underground are going to be more expensive. But, but again, it is you and it is me, the ratepayers, that will be paying for these upgrades. And ladies and gentlemen, we don't just live anywhere. We live in New York State, adjacent to New York City, the largest metropolitan region in the United States of America. There are tens of millions of ratepayers, hundreds of thousands of kilowatt hours. And so what initially looks like a staggeringly large and expensive project spread over that many ratepayers could be pennies on utility bills. So the limits to this solution, they're not technological, and they are not even economic. The limits are simply a matter of political will. Now, if I were a New Yorker, I would pay a few more pennies on my bill to bury lines to be more resilient to storm damage and other out outages. In fact, most ratepayers already pay a storm fee that's rolled into their bill that the utilities are happy to pocket when skies are clear. Now, they don't tell you this, but why don't we use some of that money to upgrade the system? If I were a New Yorker, upstate or downstate, I'd also be more inclined to pay a few pennies for a system that's harder for terrorists to attack and one that does not mar this beautiful Hudson River Valley, which is one of the most culturally significant regions in our country. And one in which we talk about upstate and downstate all the time is a region in which many downstate residents are moving in for second homes, to build businesses, to visit on vacations, generating millions of dollars for the state as well. And so to the governor, we say very simply, stay involved. Your remarks in your State of the State address have set a new standard for what impact should be, and frankly, we thank you for that. However, your words are meaningless if the utility companies are allowed to ignore them. This is your energy highway plan. The buck stops with you, and it's ultimately your responsibility to make sure that this is done right. You appoint the Public Service Commission. And I'm sorry, all this talk of independence, under the realities of Albany politics, the Public Service Commission will do what you direct them to do. Okay. And to National Grid, Central Hudson, the other large utilities, we ask you to save the money that you spend on lobbying and on public relation materials that frankly confuse more than inform, and instead take a fresh look at the technologies that we're talking about. Do this the right way with our money and abandon completely without question or equivocation, any scheme that involves eminent domain. We are not giving up our land for you to acquire a new asset for your books. And lastly, for those of us here today and those listening, please make your voices heard in print to the governor and to the Public Service Commission, not because it feels good, but because it is necessary and because it is working. Now, it's a sad truth that the best in us often emerges only when we have to encounter a threat. But unfortunately, this is the real democracy, the hard democracy, the kind of democracy that continues long after you've turned a lever or darkened a circle in the voter booth.